strong. Don't allow your conditioning to dehumanize you and don't allow your conditioning to make you so loyal to the badge that you will allow these criminals to get away with murder and all other sorts of activity. They're hiding behind their badge and they need to be called out and we need you guys. We're going to need you guys. All of us need you. So please watch out for your conditioning. That's, that's what this story is all about to make sure you keep those criminals in check. And it's not just this conditioning that's happening in law enforcement and the military and other places that are trying to train people to be obedient to the state. It's also happening in schools. Children are being taught in Common Core socialist propaganda. Uh, it's basically North Korean style of teaching where children are being taught at a very young age that they belong to the state and that they want to silence any dissent Take a look at this North Korean propaganda film. Uh, it's on YouTube. It's got nearly a million views. And basically, they're teaching students how to uh, kill Americans with geometry. And it's basically about a boy who goofs off instead of studying. And his friend says, hey, I, I noticed that you were drawing pictures of Americans instead of listening to the teacher. And the boy's like, oh, what are you so worried about? It's easy homework. It's just about degrees. All of them are printed right there on the compass. Then later, the boy falls asleep. He dreams of being at war with U.S. battleships. His pencils turn into rockets, and his compass becomes a big gun. And now he has to figure out how to actually use his protractor as it's intended. He has to align the rockets properly to hit invading U.S. ships. <laughs> See? Math is fun, y'all, so don't neglect your studies because one day you may need to kill Americans. And our education system is no different here. Some of the older viewers, you might re remember the war propaganda during World War II. It's the same thing. It's all this North Korean education system. Kids belong to the state, silence any dissent. They want you to just be smart enough to push buttons and dumb enough to take it for 65 years until you are sick enough to lay in your bed all day where they won't give you any Medicare to take care of you at that point. Now. One of these such people is Bill Ayers. Now, you may remember him. He uh, was part of the Weather Underground. They had a really violent bombing campaign. Well, he was here in Austin yesterday uh, promoting his new book, but he has found a way to destroy society even further. He is using the federal school system to propagandize your children. And David Knight approached him about it. A gentleman named William Ayers Stephanopoulos began. He was part of the Weather Underground in the 70s. They bombed the Pentagon, and he's never apologized for that. A bomb exploded early this morning in the Pentagon, and left-wing terrorists telephoned newspapers to say they were responsible. At midday, the Associated Press got a phone call from a man saying he was with the Weather Underground and that bombs would explode at the Departments of Interior and Agriculture and the Smithsonian before the day was out. People calling themselves members of the Weather Underground last night planted bombs in federal office buildings in Washington and Oakland, California. A student turned to me and said, oh my God, that guy has the same name as yours. This cartoon character named Bill Ayers, looked, who looked exactly like me and shared my name and address, was about to become a punching bag in a presidential campaign. And the Weather Underground, suspended in amber for all these years, was reborn out of the blue, not only active and breathing fire, but all of a sudden more menacing and dangerous. I ask, well, what is going to happen to those people that we can't re-educate, that are die-hard cap capitalists? And the reply was that they'd have to be eliminated. And when I pursued this further, they estimated that they would have to eliminate 25 million people in these re-education centers. And when I say eliminate, I mean kill. Ayers quit his bombing campaign and worked with the educational elite to figure out the logistics for the re-education of society using centralized control of education. What are you proposing for public education then? I think, I think we need to fund, fund public education generously. I think we should close the Pentagon and fund public education. Yes. He portrays himself as an anarchist and a dissenter, but he wants to force government into every aspect of our lives that he thinks is important. 
especially our children's education. Do you think, don't you think the government controlling the schools is I'm really... I'm an anarchist when it comes to government. We'd agree that both Bush and Obama <laughs> were criminals, right? Oh, absolutely. And that the but government wait, wait. is manufacturing consent for that and shutting down dissent. And I could just be, you know, uh, out of the society. That actually isn't an option. Well, it's not really privilege. I know a lot of people who are very poor who do it. It's a, it's, it's a priority. It's a priority. It's not a privilege. It's people who care enough about it that they will do it. Ayers accuses homeschoolers of privilege, yet. Daddy knew a judge that got Bernadine out of jail. His dad, who sat on the board of General Dynamics, Zenith, Sears, and many other giant corporations. Michael Kennedy came up with this brilliant idea, which is we'll get every lawyer to write an affidavit. So whatever they can say, whatever they want, but they can say I've spoken with her and there is no way she will ever testify. My favorite came from an establishment lawyer from Chicago who was a friend of my dad's who came to St. Bernadine kind of whimsically and he wrote an affidavit and so we got her out. Ayers is an elitist who pretends to be on the side of the poor, a statist who pretends to be an anarchist. Well, stick around after the break because Alex Jones has some very heated words about our spy-riddled surveillance society. You're definitely going to want to check that out. Thank you so much for tuning in to the news tonight. We'll see you here again weekdays at 7 p.m. Central. Symbols are powerful, and the globalists have hijacked the symbols of America. They've turned them into their own symbols. Well, we are restoring the idea of the true republic, not the counterfeit globalist empire, by promoting the icon George Washington and others. That's why we're rolling out on a 100% Made in America line of incredible pro-liberty apparel. We are repopularizing liberty. We are helping fellow Americans Americans rediscover what made this country great. We are the spirit of 1776. We are 1776 worldwide. We are all brothers and sisters in arms in the animating contest of liberty in the long march towards humanity's ultimate destiny of freedom. Visit MadeIn1776.com today and vote with your dollars to promote truly made in America high quality products and promote the ideals of liberty. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure these sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee, and it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great-tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. Now, the reforms I'm proposing today should give the American people greater confidence that their rights are being protected, even as our intelligence and law enforcement agencies maintain the tools they need to keep us safe. The bottom line is that people around the world, regardless of their nationality, should know that the United States is not spying on ordinary people who don't threaten our national security. President Obama came out today and said, relax. Paul Revere would love the NSA. The NSA spying on you and your family are like your neighbors in your local community. They want to help you. Ladies and gentlemen, we knew 15 years ago exactly what the National Security Agency and 14 other illegal agencies were doing. Grabbing all the digital data and putting it through major hubs to sift through the information, not to look for terrorists. They keep saying, oh, if we had the NSA in place, 9-11 wouldn't have happened. Sibel Edmonds has gone public and other whistleblowers who were there on the days before 9-11 tracking the CIA and others 
protecting Al Qaeda, protecting the hijackers. The FBI lived with some of them. They were just patsy cutouts like Lee Harvey Oswald and Tim McVeigh. But shifting out of that, Obama saying, we don't spy on citizens and we don't spy on foreign leaders. It's on record they spy on Merkel, the head of Germany and others. It's on record that Congress is being spied on. It's on record that hundreds of major corporations that are part of this are feeding their data from Microsoft to Google to Apple into the NSA grids. Under Obamacare, your health care is filed through PRISM into the NSA. So this is all in the fine print. This is not a mystery. But the general public who was told for decades the government's not watching you because it's illegal, that's a conspiracy theory, even as whistleblowers like Wayne Madsen from the NSA went public in the mid-90s, they would deny that it was happening. So the big revelation is that they lied to us, they are surveilling us, they're using it to target the press, from AP to Fox News, they're using it to spy on the troops, members of the NSA are using it on record uh, to spy on their wives and girlfriends and husbands. This is insane. Of course this unconstitutional power is being abused. That's why it's always been illegal in any free society. And so why did Obama get up there and give this hour-long speech today? Because he's desperate. He doesn't want to go to jail. He's been part of expanding illegal NSA wiretapping and mass searches of Internet data private data. They've been part of the Homeland Security rollout, putting up these police poles that have wireless hubs that grab all of your cell phone info illegally. They have been part of this takeover along with the Republican leadership and the Democratic leadership in the Congress. The courts have been complicit to a great extent. And so now they need to mainline it and say, okay, we're spying on you, but I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to fix it. I'm going to make sure that it's done properly. This is the guy that betrayed us on Obamacare. This is the guy ca caught lying more than any other president before. You like your doctor, you like your plan, you can keep your doctor, you can keep your plan. You like your current insurance, you keep that insurance, period. They are just conditioning us in a process to accept total surveillance. And they're telling us that total surveillance beyond 1984 is as American as apple pie. Just a year ago, Clapper. Does the NSA collect any type of data at all on millions or hundreds of millions of Americans? No, sir. The NSA specifically targets the communications of everyone. It ingests them by default. They are liars. They are lying to you like you're a foreign military enemy because America has been hijacked by a corporate offshore takeover that is putting spy hubs into everything, from your refrigerator, uh, to your computer, to your so-called smartphone. This is the nature of the new web that's being built. It's based on you being surveilled. It's based on you having no privacy. And they think you're stupid, and they're there telling you, we don't spy on you without warrants. Oh, we got caught. Well, we don't dragnet all the info. Oh, we got caught. We don't use it politically. Oh, we got caught. We don't use it to persecute people. Oops, we do. And now Obama's trying to reset, coming back going, listen, Paul Revere would love this. The NSA's like your good neighbor. Uh, this is to keep you safe. We want to stop a new 9-11 so they can stage another terror attack or allow terrorists to attack us, the same ones they're funding in Syria, and say, see, we told you so. You reined in the NSA and this happened. When they'll never even rein it in to begin with. Its main mission is getting key data to be able to leverage out their competition in the marketplace. It's so insiders can game our entire world system like a corrupt casino or like a lottery. That's what's happening. So that's the secret of this. Obama and his other cohorts lied about this existing. Now because of Snowden and others, it's come out and they're engaged in damage control. But this is a two-edged sword. If they don't get brought to justice now, if they don't start getting in trouble now, and Congress just says, we're going to give Obama dictatorial power on Obamacare and borders and, and, and NSA to do whatever he wants, they've actually then used this crisis of their corruption as a way to get even more power. It's like Bush screwed up Katrina on purpose, so FEMA got double the funding. Uh, it's the same thing every time. They screw it up and then get more power out of it. They're not screwing it up. 
This is all a plan, all a program. They call it a technocracy. So that's why Obama came out, to just mainline all of it out of the open and then to make himself the savior. Because the truth is, Obama was part of the